Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the uh, pre-production for interviews because you are going to be doing uh, some interviews and we have to talk about how to prepare for them. In any production that you're going to do, there's going to be uh, three parts to a production. Right now you see the word pre. Pre means before. So before we begin the production, there are certain things we have to do. Then we actually have the production. That's the second phase. That's where you actually do it. That's what you're going to be doing next week. You will be doing the production. And then, in most cases, after that, you would have post. means after. Post-production. That's where you take things back. Uh, most of the time, you would put them in the computer. You would be editing. You'd be adding maybe music and graphics, and you would uh, cut stuff to, uh, apart. You would rearrange it. However, in this first exercise that you're going to do, we're not going to do post-production. We are going to do pre-production, we're going to do production, and uh, then we're going to watch. We're going to watch your interviews. Um, in doing an interview, basically we want to gather, you know, information. We want to gather information. And uh, this is just kind of an old saying right here, tell them, what, uh, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. I go, what? You know, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. That's the three parts. You've gone over this, I'm sure, in English class. In anything, you, when you're writing, you basically have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You have an opening, you have the story, you have a conclusion, you have three parts. Well, we do the same thing in an interview. First of all, tell them what you're going to tell them. That's your introduction. That's your introduction. All of a sudden, if the TV came on and there's somebody talking about, I've lived in green for the past uh, 14 years and I'm planning on being a rocket scientist. And that's the first thing that came on. You're going, what's this? You would have no idea because you're actually into the story. So we have to introduce the story. We have to introduce the people. We have to introduce what it's all about. So we have to go on into this part. Tell them what you're going to tell them. So we're going to have an introduction. So when we watch the TV, the first thing we're going to see is the interviewer. That's going to be all of you. That's going to be all of you. All of you are going to be an interviewer. All of you are going to be an interviewee. You're going to be the person that's being interviewed. And then the third person is going to be a cameraman. We have to have a cameraman to record everything. And then we're going to change things around. And we're going to uh, uh, you know, get things set up where uh, now that cameraman's going to be interviewed, that person's going to be the interviewer, so we're going to move it around. Okay, so you have to have an introduction to tell them what's going on. The tell them part, that's the actual interview, where you find out about that person, something about them, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The very last thing, we finish the interview. Uh, the interview's over, you ask the last question, and you said, bye. Well, that's not, you know, that doesn't make sense. I mean, a, a grade school kid could do that. We need a summary. We need some kind of a closing in, about that person that we just interviewed. Three or four sentences, and, we would, and we'll be finished with that. You might, it, it may, if you were talking about, let's say, uh, the big football game. You just interviewed the coach about the big football game tonight. At the ending, you, would be, uh, uh, you might be saying, well, it looks like it's going to be an exciting night uh, you know, for Green High School. The coach said that his players are ready, and uh, they're going to take the field, and they're going to be strong and dominant tonight. For WGHS, I'm Joe Schmedley. Okay, that might be in conclusion. I just interviewed the football coach. He answered a bunch of questions. And at the end, I made kind of wrapped everything up that the coach said it's going to be an exciting night and dynamic game, whatever it might be. So some kind of a conclusion. So anytime we're telling the story, there's going to be three parts to it. Okay, what is the first thing we're going to see and hear? The first thing we're going to see and hear is the interviewer. The interviewer is the person that's asking the questions. The person that's asking the questions. So that will be the very first thing that we will see. When we, when we play back your videos, you're going to be introducing the person that you're going to interview. And we'll talk about writing that opening. We don't want to say, I'm with Bob Schmedley, here's Bob. You know, that's not creative at all. If I was watching it on TV, I go, I get the remote, I turn to Jerry Springer. Forget this, that's boring. Okay, you want to make it interesting. 
and the, the interviewer will be doing what we call a stand-up. In the business, they call the very opening a stand-up. Now, the stand-up doesn't necessarily mean you have to be standing up. Maybe if I was doing a story uh, at a grade school and there's a bunch of little kids around and so forth, I might sit down on the floor. So it has nothing to do with the actual standing up. Most of the time people are standing, but you could be seated. It all depends on the situation. But they call it a stand-up opening. Uh, when you watch the 6 o'clock news at night, and they, they will be talking about the fire, and they say, let's go to Chris you know, Humphrey in, uh, in downtown Akron. And then it could either be live or it could be a tape with Chris going, tragedy struck today. <clears throat> The tragedy struck today in downtown Akron when a fire broke out in a three-story building. You know, uh, dozens of people were hurt, millions of dollars in damage. Okay, that's a stand-up opening, and that's what you will see all the time on the news. They'll always introduce the subject, then they might go in, they interview the fire chief and people that ran out of the building and so forth. Um, so the audio, we will see the person, the audio is going to consist of the interviewer uh, introducing the subject. And the one key thing is, is on the opening, you need to look in the camera. We don't want you to have your piece of paper reading. Uh, today, I have one of the outstanding uh, uh, juniors at Green High School. You know, that looks bad looking down at a piece of paper. You're only going to do three or four sentences, so you actually need to memorize that <clears throat> when doing practice, where you're looking right back at the camera and doing the opening. The cameraman will be there, and once it's recording and the little light's on, They'll point the finger and, and right at you, and then you can go ahead and you can do your opening. So, and that you'll need to be looking right at the camera. Okay, the opening must have a hook. Okay, what is a hook? If you're fishing, catch a fish, hopefully hook it, and you will pull it in. You will drag it in. That's what you're trying to get the viewers to do. On your opening, you want it to sound exciting enough that the people will not go. Click and change channels. You want them to watch you. You want them to watch you. So you're developing a hook. That's where they talk about hooking the person, keeping their attention till you can get in the story. If, you, if it's a dull, boring, uh, nothing to the opening, the people, they'll turn you off right off the bat. So you want to get something where you're developing a hook to get their attention, and you're going to be looking right back at the camera for that particular one. <coughs> now next. On your opening, and developing your opening, and that you uh, just want to tell a little story about that person. I could not do that if I'm interviewing you right now because I don't know anything about you. How can I do an opening? I might say a female. How you Pardon? How are you doing? Where you been? Yeah. How are you, you? I'm not. But that's asking them a question. I'm talking. You're talking to the studio audience that's going to watch your production. I could say a female at Green High School, because that's all I really know right now. You're a female and you're a student at Green High School. But in a little bit, you're going to do some pre-production where if I was interviewing you, I would find out a lot of information about you. So you want to basically put together three or four sentences on the opening that's going to be interesting um, to introduce the person. And we want to leave out, uh, I have with me today, I'm going to tell you about... Uh, uh, this person's going to tell me what it's like going to school. Just always leave those words out. Leave out that I'm going to do something. Just even the words going. You know, just, I say, just do it. Make a statement. Joe Schmedley, a senior at Green High School, is really excited about his senior year. Okay, I make a statement instead of, I have with me today a senior at Green High School, Joe Schmedley. Uh, Joe's going to tell us about you don't need to go to tell us about, uh, I have with me, and so forth. Just make statements. Just write statements. And it will make it a lot more interesting. And like I said, this doesn't have to be long. You know, maybe three sentences, three or four, just to get us through that opening. Okay, this will be the, I got one more thing after this. This isn't too long. Questions. I'm going to ask you a question. Hey, how do you like school? Don't. Hey, how do you like getting up in the morning? You, or do you like getting up in the morning? No. Do you like doing, staying up, doing three hours of homework? Yes. Okay, no, yes, yes, no, I don't think so. Anyway, that sounds boring. That's not an interview. 
So that's not the person's fault. You ask them a question and they answered it. So what you're trying to do is design open-ended questions. And you want to make sure that the interviewer cannot answer you with one or two words. Yes, no, uh, or maybe little short sentences. All we're trying to do is get a conversation going. That's a big thing. It's not that big of a deal. We're trying to just to get a conversation going between me and the person I'm interviewing. A real easy way to do this. And what you're going to be doing is writing five questions. And that, the real easy way is if, if you use the magic words, who, what, when, where, why, maybe how. That's going to really help you out. Uh, tell me about, uh, you could say, um, what, is your, uh, what is your routine for getting up in the morning? Well, the alarm clock goes off at 5.30 and I pick up the alarm clock and throw it against the wall. Then I uh, hobble on over to the shower. Okay, by using uh, those words. If, there, if you were interviewing uh, somebody about the game tonight, uh, tell me. You could also use words like tell me, describe. Tell me about the big game tonight. Well, we're going to be playing so forth. Where's the, uh, where's the game going to be uh, located? Well, it's going to be at Green High School Stadium. Or you could combine two of them. You know, when, when and where uh, can we uh, uh, get uh, tickets for the game? Well, you can pick them up after school. They're going to be down at the athletic office. So by using those words, you will not go wrong. You won't go wrong. Now, you still might be, have somebody that doesn't answer you with long statements. But when you write your questions, I'm going to take a look at your questions before you actually do your interview. If I look down and go, yes, that means you, you, that's not right. You wrote it so they can answer it in one word. Just take a look at your questions, and if you just use those words, it's going to make a big difference. And all we're trying to do is get a conversation going. If you interviewed me, you could easily get a conversation going if you use those words, because I'm a loudmouth. I talk a lot. You're going to have some people that they just do not talk that much. If you watch uh, Conan O'Brien, a lot of times they have guests on. Well, this is the first time Conan's met them, but he has paperwork in front of him. He, his staff, they conduct in, uh, research about that particular person and the movies they're in and their, and their background and family life and interesting things. So Conan has all that information in front of him. Well, if he gets a guest on there that if they're boring, he asks them a question, even using the magic words. If they just have little short sentences and he has to keep asking things and asking things, I guarantee you they're not going to show up on Jay Leno. They're not going to show up on other shows because they're lousy. There's some actors, they have to have a script. They cannot just, they just can't talk right off the cuff. So if that person, maybe that's the first time uh, being on TV or some big new star, if they're lousy on there, they're not going to show up. And that, that's too much work for Conan. He wants to ask him a question. He wants them to give him some conversation. He can ask another question. So even if you prepare ahead of time, you know something about the person, you prepare your questions properly, you still might get somebody that doesn't talk that much. So the big secret you're going to do would be to design these open-ended questions, especially with all those magic words in there. Um, at the ending, you're going to write a closing. Okay, we're done. We're done with the five questions. Now we're going to have the uh, stand-up closing. The closing is nothing more than a summary, a wrap-up, a wrap-up of the interview. And we're going to do it like the opening, a little bit, a tidbit of information gathered during the interview. And by um, doing some of the pre-production work, you'll be able to sit down and write your closing right now. If I, like I mentioned a minute ago, if I was interviewing the coach, my closing could be, well, it sure sounds like it's going to be an exciting uh, game tonight. Uh, uh, the coach said that he's ready for this big game, and he's going to be, bring home a big win for the Bulldogs. Okay, talk to coach, big win, so forth. Just three or four sentences. Doesn't have to be that long. Tidbit of information. And then at the end, we're going to put what's called the tag. The tag. For WGHS, so we're going to use this, uh, it's, um, it's like they have WEWS, WKYC, WMMS, uh, all the stations that are east of the Mississippi River begin with the uh, call letter with W. But just put down for WGHS and that's where you put your name in. I'm Joe Schmedley. We do not need signing off. We don't need any of that. 
in that we just need your tag at the ending. You finished up to, uh, talking uh, or doing your closing uh, where you said that it should be a real exciting game tonight. For WGHS, I'm Joe Schmedley. And then you're, then you're done. That's it. That's it. So you just have an opening. You have your five questions. You have your closing. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple to do. The big thing's writing your five questions. So this is your pre-production for the interview. Now what we have to do is, and that we're going to go through, get you in groups, you have to spend some time here. Now this, once again, this is your time without me flapping my jaws up here. Uh, this is where you will sit and need to get some information. And if I have the three of you together, you decide who you want to interview. And say, okay, well, how about if I interview you? Okay, that'd be fine. Then he might say, well, I can interview him. Or he can say, I'll interview you. Everybody's going to do an interview. Everybody's going to do an interview. Everybody's going to be an interviewee. And we have the third person. That third person's going to be the cameraman. And we will talk on Monday about the camera work because there's a specific way that we need to do the camera work. That's the technical end. That's the hands-on right now. This is, we talk about head knowledge, hand knowledge. This is the head knowledge. This is when we push a pencil. That video I showed you uh, yesterday that, uh, that the Joe Cole and the whole group did, uh, we, gosh, we worked on that for probably two and a half months before we ever picked up a camera. And it was doing the pre-production, getting the script ready. Then once the script was ready, then we sat down and figured out what shots we needed and so forth. Pre-production is the most important part of a production. That will be a test question, by the way. Pre-production is the most important part of any production. Because the better you prepare, the better you sit here where it's comfortable and uh, relaxed and you have a pencil and paper and you plan things out, it will make the production go smoother and then it will make your post-production, which you'll find out later, it can be very difficult, it makes your uh, post-production easier. But out of the three, pre-production is the most important part uh, of putting anything together. So this will be kind of uh, just the basics of, of doing a very, very simple interview. And we'll be starting on that uh, next week. But right now, we're going to give you a chance to, uh, to get together um, uh, to put the uh, interviews in place. OK, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12, 13. Okay, we're going to need, um, I'll tell you what I, I'll do. Since we have a small class, I'll kind of let you pick groups. There has to be, has to be at least three people in a group, and there's going to be one of the groups that's going to have four. Going to be one group of four, there's going to be, uh, the other groups are going to have three people in it. And then I'll let you decide. I don't care who you interview, but pick somebody, and then they'll say, okay, well, if you interview me, I'll interview him, and he can interview her. So everybody's going to have a paper that's going to have your, your opening, closing, and five questions. What you need to do today, first talk to the person. You can't write questions because you don't know anything about them. We've had a lot of interesting interviews because I find out, uh, then people go, well, what, what can I talk about? Well, if there's nothing else to talk about, find out. Um, have they lived in green all their life? And that have they gone to other schools and maybe they can give you information about that. How about their family? How many other siblings? How about pets they have in, the, uh, in their family? How about uh, what they like to do for fun on weekends? What are some of their hobbies? Uh, do they have a car? What kind of car? It, you could ask them a lot of questions. A lot of times we'll talk to somebody, what's your hobby? Well, horses. Oh, really? Horses? Yeah, well, I've been, I've been riding since I've been four years old and I have a horse and I compete. Really? Okay, well then, guess what? You might design all your questions about the horses. That's what they do, and then you can find out that they compete and say, well, tell me about competition. And that, do you write, wear one of those little hats and put like a suit on and sit up straight? Oh no, that's English writing. I do Western. Okay, what's Western writing? So, it could be about horses. You talk to somebody, find out they're into martial arts. They've been doing martial arts since they've been six years old. And they, uh, they got a second degree black belt. Maybe you can talk to them or make all, everything about martial arts. It doesn't have to be uh, all this other stuff about family and fun and, and weekends and so forth. But you can do that if you can't find anything else out. But in picking their brain, 
and that then you can say, ooh, I want to go this direction, and they tell you a lot of information. Then you can sit down and write the questions, and once your questions are put together, then you can tell the person, here's what I'm going to ask you. So they have a chance to prepare their thoughts. Even though they know that, I don't like to spring questions on anybody. Because it can make them look bad, can make you look bad. So they will know ahead of time, here's the five questions I'm going to ask you. Okay, so why don't you get together, pull your chairs up, pencil, paper, sit down. First thing, just talk to each other. Figure out, number one, who, uh, who you're going to be interviewing and, and who's going to be the cameraman and so forth. And then second, pick their brain, find out something about them. Third, write the questions. Then, if you get all of that done, then you can start working on your opening and closing. Okay, you need to write this down because I have to have the papers on that. I want to see your paperwork on that. Okay, let's get started.